the church of Jesus Christ is walking into a new level of power. I'm talking about ordinary women, ordinary men, no titles, but they're going to be given the authority and the ability to be able to handle the power of God like never before. The season that we are walking into, the power of God is going to hit the world through the church. But I want you to understand something. When the Bible says the church, a lot of people are disqualified. Watch this. I was reading the Bible. I was reading the Bible. And I've been so overwhelmed by this. Because of the uniqueness of the season, the gathering that we have, we have started today in Jesus' nice is going to be something of a movement where as we come together, we collect anointing and we go back into the world. Right? Now watch this. Jesus talks about a certain period and he talks about the church. You see, a book that a lot of Christians don't like to read is Revelations. Baby, this is the season to read it. Thank you. If you have never read the book of Revelations before, please, I beg you, read it. But you understand the chapter begins with Jesus speaking first to his church. But watch this. The Bible says that he speaks of seven churches. But every single church is condemned or two. It means the, the vast majority of people who are claiming to be followers of Jesus Christ have left what it means to follow Jesus. And so if you are going to handle the anointing of the hour, if you're going to be trusted by God to begin to receive, because you know the Bible says this, that there's going to be a division. You are going to clearly see those who are serving God and those who are not. It's going to be evident. Because you're going to see strange acts of signs, wonders, and miracles from ordinary people. You're going to see them laying hands on the sick and being healed. You're going to see them have supernatural wisdom that, if you look at our parliament, you know that wisdom is saying if you look at those who are, are supposed to be the princes of the world, you will know that wisdom is failing in the season that we're in. What you need in this hour that comes from above. And Jesus is going to be pouring that on his power on those whom he approves. And so it's important in this day and age for you to really package yourself because it's not going to be sufficient to say that, you know what, I've been going to church for seven years. Because Satan actually likes people who claim Jesus but are robbed of his power. Large buildings has never troubled him. Large congregations have never shocked, they have never disturbed the kingdom of darkness. But 120 people who took the house of God as the house of prayer, who understood what it means to stay in the place of prayer until the Holy Ghost descends upon them, they changed the world. I don't know who I'm speaking to and what you have been created to do, but in this hour, the Spirit of the Lord will descend upon you and elevate you to operate in the, the power and the capacity of the Holy Spirit that differentiates you from the world. And so today we're going to be speaking on the topic, what does it mean and look like to be chosen? The concept or and the theology of being chosen is one that most of us know. All right? So let me say it. For you are a chosen, a royal priesthood. We know it. But how many people walk in it? We know what the verse says, but how many of us are actually living the reality of what it means that means to be a holy nation and a chosen a, a holy nation and a royal priesthood? And so today, I'm believing that the Holy Spirit will enlighten our minds to the understanding of that, so that we can walk in the power and the authority of the Spirit in these days. You are a strange being. 
Do you hear what I said? You are a strange and a peculiar being. Do not allow yourself to be reduced in this season to somebody that has no power. I say it and I say it over again, we are in a season where it's power versus power. The enemy is going to go around this really trying to cause havoc. People losing their jobs, people's health going, but power that operates in you will cause you to be marked off from the crisis of the time. And so the Bible says, I'm going to tell you something. Let's open our scriptures to Genesis chapter 15. In order for you to be able to handle the power that God wants to give you in this season and in this moment, you have to be rooted in the understanding of who you are in God. The time for you to only seek your identity from mere posts on Instagram is gone. The time for you to feel good and confident about yourself because of what somebody told you about yourself is gone. It is going to be the understanding that you have in God that is going to shape you out to walk in the authority that has been bestowed in you in the season. And so let me get you to understand this or something, right? Genesis chapter 15. And the Bible says, from verse 1, you see Abraham here. What does it look like to be chosen? What does it look like, mean, and look like to be chosen? And after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord, God, what will you give me? The state that Abraham is in in that moment is the state that many of us as Christians find ourselves in. Where you receive a word from God you have heard a promise. There's, um, most people in here have experienced a time where you went to a conference, you went to an event, you read your Bible, and a word of God hit you in your spirit that you believed it. But there is the spirit of the enemy that comes to cause you to be weary. And so when another word comes, it wasn't the enemy that came to speak to him. It wasn't a motivational speaker that came to speak to him. The Almighty God came to Abraham and said to him, I am your, your shield, your defense, meaning that nobody can touch you unless they touch me. Nobody can break you unless they break me. And I am I. Not that I'm going to give you a car, not that I'm going to give you a job, not that I'm going to give you money. I am your reward, meaning that all that I am is yours. Abraham heard it and did not care. Because many of us have been in that state where we have heard a word from God and it don't move us. Abraham was at this place where he was destitute. What does it mean to be destitute? Meaning he's got a, he had a wife, he had an army, he wasn't rich, he was wealthy. So how could he be destitute? But do you understand that you can have a car, you can have a job, you can have money, but if you don't have that one thing, you are impoverished in your spirit. Abraham was at that state where he had stuff, but he didn't have the stuff. Because unless he had the child, everything that God was talking about was a dream. Some of you, where you are at is somebody's prayer point. And so, right now, you come into church, but you're weary in your spirit. The Sunday to Sunday is not fueling you because there is something that is missing and causing you to be impoverished in your soul. Abraham, 
I'm giving you me. He said, I don't know what I need. I'm your shield. I'm sitting here being mocked by people. And you're telling me that you are my shield. I can't hear what you are saying, God, because there is something that I need from you. Have we ever thought that in our spirit? Nobody is denying that we don't have stuff. You may have got a promotion last week, but you didn't get the thing. You bought a house last month, but you still don't have the thing. And so, don't allow somebody to make you believe that if you don't have the thing that you've got a problem, you've got to just celebrate on what you have. Nah, 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 nah. Abraham said, I don't have my thing. And so, until we handle this matter, God, we can't proceed in talking about great reward. We can't proceed about talking about, but, but the powerful thing about Abraham is this, watch this, is that you can be in a place where you don't have the thing. You can be in a place where you are destitute. You can be in a place where you are broken. You can be in a place where you are let down. You can be in a place where you are disappointed. You can be in a place where your prayer is like it's not being answered. You can be in that place, but never allow the enemy to cause you to be ignorant of who you are. Because most believers, it is in that moment that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. From the exact same people that are supposed to have power. You are a chosen generation, but don't, you, don't, you don't look chosen. You are a royal priesthood, but you don't look like royalty. I have seen servants riding on horses, the Bible says, and princes struggling on foot. Because it's in that moment that the enemy begins to whisper into your ears. This thing that you have been praying for, maybe you need to figure out that maybe it's God's will for your life. You haven't been married all, all this while. Maybe God don't want you to be married. The devil is a liar. Because somebody could have convinced Abraham that because he was 75 years old, maybe it wasn't God's will for him to have a child. And what does the enemy do? He steals the desire. And as, the, as you get to the play, place where you stop asking, you will never receive. And so you get to heaven and you, you realize that hold on a minute, you were supposed to have a whole generation of love of people called your children but you allowed the enemy to steal your desire. Somebody walking and the enemy has troubled your mind but because he's troubled your mind for long enough what you have is social media getting Christians to be comfortable with mental illness. Mm. Don't bring names to cause me to accept what Jesus' blood has died on the cross to remove from my life.
what it needs to be chosen. Let me, let me, let me show you this. Watch this. When we don't, you see, I pray that the spirit of revelation will come upon the church so that we can begin to be taught scriptures. What says is the implanted word of God? Please, when you go to church on Sunday and your pastor preaching or he's teaching and your body is not shaking, come down and listen and learn. It is a shame the amount of Christians that don't know scripture. It is a shame. I mean, somebody come up to me, they said something to me, right? And I thought it was so powerful. Uh, they, 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 they thought it was so powerful. And it was, but they thought it was revelational. Like, <laughs> like I just saw this in the word of God. Like, ain't nobody ever seen this. They said, this, and, 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 they, and they described something. I said, I learned that in Sunday school. Do you see where the church has moved? That what they used to teach children at the age of six, they ain't taught adults. At the age of 25. What I learned in Sunday school, people who have been saved recently don't know. But this is your will. This is your inheritance. If you don't know the word, you can't access the treasures that God has for you. Snap out of the habit of looking for who's going to hype you up. Open up your word, read it. Go somewhere who can open up to a place where they can open up the scripture for you and divide the scripture for you so that you can understand what it is that you're supposed to have as a child of God. Be me being a child of God is not a quote. It is an inheritance in which it's supposed to show in my life. If my Christianity cannot be seen, I have to wonder whether I really if I'm following Jesus. Because the 12 followed, we could see. The 120 followed, they, we could see. So why do we think that it's acceptable for us to follow and it can't be seen? If we leave Jesus, we leave the power. If we leave the word of God, we leave the power. You will get to this place where you are dancing and you are shouting, but your life is still the same. But God wants for you, for you to hear the word of God, for you to see the word of God, believe the word of God, and your life change. Your life change. So in Exodus, right? Watch this. In Exodus, God unveils to us what it means to be chosen. Because God didn't choose Abraham. You gotta love it. You gotta, you gotta love the story of Abraham and God. We would have had a different idea of God if God waited for Abraham to have a child and then give him the promise. But God gave him the promise before he had one child. So that you can understand that you are chosen not because of what you got. You are chosen not because of who you are. Some of you are in the body of Christ and you don't feel like you can contribute nothing. You look at yourself in the, in the mirror and, and you feel like you are nobody. And so the enemy wants you to believe that you are nobody. But Abraham was a nobody who was claimed and chosen by God. And so God chose us not because we have something, but he chose us because of the fact that he decided to choose us from the foundation of the world. You think that you're saved by accident, you're not. I was worshiping the Lord the other day and I began to weep because I thought to myself, who am I that the Lord would redeem me from the wrath that is to come on the earth? Do you, have you comprehended that? That some people are going to go to hell but your name is written in the book of life. Do you understand that? I'm not special. I'm not more righteous. But mercy decided to find me in a club somewhere. Mercy decided to find me in somebody's bed somewhere. Mercy decided to find me on the street somewhere and pick me from the miry clay and save me and put my name in the book of life. 
But here what the Bible says. Here what the Bible says. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I'm going to read from verse 6. For you, this is where Peter gets it from. For you are a holy. For you are a holy. Now, the word in Hebrew is kodash. Right? I'm a Hebrew. I don't know what I mean. And so you have to take a moment to get an understanding because sometimes the English don't do well. And so many of us say holy. What does it mean? So we take holy to mean I wear long skirt. I'm holy, and so because I'm holy, I don't sleep around. We take holy to mean I don't do stuff because we don't understand what holy is. And so you got the holy church. You know, I grew up in one of them ones. You skirt to the floor. Tell them, Pastor. <laughs> Because you wearing jeans now, you are on your way. <laughs> you can't even make it to the pulpit. <laughs> and so, they don't wear no makeup because it's a list of rules. But the word kadosh literally means to be inherently sacred and set apart, free from the attributes of the fallen humanity. What make you sin is not found in God. What make you lie is not found in God. He is free from the enslavement of a fallen humanity. And so when God says you are holy, he's communicating to you that what don't behave like you are a man man do you not understand what the blood of Jesus has done for you you ain't an ordinary person and so what affect them don't affect you because you have been set free from the attributes so I'm walking on this earth but I'm not from this earth This is why the Bible says that when they say there is a casting down, you shall say there is a because I'm not from this earth. Because I am a holy. This isn't about a list of rules. This is about God inviting those that he has given the rights and the power to be children of God. This is about him opening up himself and saying Become who I am. So Jesus reminded them, did you not hear when he says, but ye are gods. You talking to me? Your mouth is rope. Do you know who you are? But God called Abraham that in a destitute state. So the reason why the Lord will allow some of your desires to be held back so that you can know that you are not chosen because you don't have nothing to offer God. He didn't choose you because you benefit him. You are a nothing without him, but yet he, he decided to set his affection on you. So he says, you are kudosh. People of the Lord, your God. For the Lord has chosen, now watch this word, the word chosen means banker. It means this, to carefully, with great thought and reasoning, select somebody in order that you may set 
your affection on them. Ah. <laughs> Meaning that the day when I went to church and the pastor gave the altar call and I brought my knees to the front, God from the foundations of the world decided that maybe you are going to be saved. He looked at six billion people and he said, I'm true. Better say it, God. <laughs> Do you know how mind blowing that is? That the Almighty God looked at A, looked at B, looked at C, reasoned it through. So I wasn't saved by accident. It wasn't the quiet good that day that drew me my emotions was not manipulated I was drawn by the Holy Ghost after careful thought and reasoning so that God can set his affection on me and so he says to us he says that you are the apple of my eye I have chosen you to be my priority. How can you know that and the enemy shake your foundation? You cannot live from that truth of the level of worth bestowed on you. Be as unsure of your future. And then he goes on to expand on what it means to be chosen. He says, You are to be a people for himself. Now, watch this, this is what I love. A special treasure. God, Jesus, I love this. The word there is cigar. It means you are his wealth. When I saw that, I, my breath left my chest for a moment. Meaning that the wealth of God isn't the expanse that he created. The wealth of God is me. me. The wealth of God is you. The wealth of God. You are chosen to be God's wealth. And so, you sit in that truth. And the apostle says, listen, we may be pressed on every side. You may break me down. I may be at a place where I am impoverished in my soul because there is something that I'm seeking from the Lord. But guess what? I know who I am. And so because I understand that I have been chosen and I understand what it means to be chosen. Guess what? When I, I feel impoverished in my soul. Guess what? Unlike people who were waiting for God to turn their situation around, but he didn't turn their situation around. I saw an Instagram reel and I was like, I don't know if this is a joke, if it's real, but this is the devil at work and it is foolishness. The man said, he said he was watching, so he said, I, I, I'm speaking particularly to a church that I've been giving my offering to, I want all my offering back because now I really am okay going to hell. Amen. So that means that Satan knows that he just needs to shake you a little bit. Yeah. And you are walking away. Let me tell you something. Don't allow anybody to preach to you that you need to come to church so you can get stuff. Because if Satan knows that he just needs to take stuff away from your life, your salvation is not sure. That's right. If you are coming to God for stuff, You are a goat waiting to be 
Good. 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 Stop! <laughs> Stop good. 21 day fasting. Stop! When is the last time you prayed 21 days to seek the face of God about his will and his agenda for the earth? shake some things in your life, she won't eat for 21 days. God shall make you fat and rubbish. Every day fast. When unbelievers see us paint God in that manner, it doesn't look attractive. Because what kind of a father puts you in so much distress don't you just forget me yourself? So I may be going through stuff, but because I know who I am, Romans chapter 8 says, what can separate me from the love of God? Because if he can find me, and he can save me, and keep me in the Lamb's book of life, what can he not free me? If he can come clothe himself in human flesh, be tortured, beaten, broken, nailed to the cross, receive abuse from those he created so that I can be saved. What can he not with great pleasure? Is anything too difficult for me? It's so from that understanding. Abraham in his impoverished state didn't shut his desire, didn't walk away from the faith, because both options are terrible. Both options are a thief. If I'm sitting in the house of God pretending I don't want what I want, I'm a liar. Because now you want me to pretend. When Paul wrote, is just what he said, it's better for you that you're not married. That means that the marriage was, he wasn't shaking his head. He didn't want it. Not that you're looking at everybody, ah, the way this one is touching his wife, ah. He's doing your bones every day. You want it. Don't lie. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That is, 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 is still a thief. And the other option to become so offended in God that you walk away from Him. Some of you are in church, but you've long gone. You are so offended in God that you are now in church as a creature of habit. You can't imagine not going to church. I mean, can I really confess that I'm not a Christian? But you have stopped believing a long time ago. And so the enemy has allowed you because you don't understand how deeply loved you are. And don't understand that you are chosen by God. For him to set his love and affection on you, you have allowed the enemy to steal your precious faith. But because he understood who he was, Abraham stayed in the place of communion. He said, this, you've got to love the way Abraham spoke to God. You are my, God right now, 
I don't want to hear. Because what I want to hear is that all these things that you are giving me, where's the child? The person that I'm going to pass all of this to is my servant Eliezer. What's the use of that? He took his burden and his heart to God. He didn't even, he didn't even mind the way he said it. God is waiting for you to lay your heart before him and say, Do you know what? God, I hear that you blessed me last time, last week. I saw that you gave me a job last month. I saw that I bought a house last year. But that's not what I want. He laid his heart before the Lord in honesty. He said, as I, I walk inside London, he said, Raggle. <laughs> he said it. How his heart felt it. But he said it to God. He laid out his desire to God. How would he not freely give you all things? And so God responded. That what you want? <laughs> Come out. Show with me. You want a baby? Is there anything too difficult for me? You want a husband? Is there anything too difficult? Come out. Some of you, you want a husband? What is it? Come on, choose. Come on, choose. Let me show you. Eligible bachelors, not this. Um... Hey, <laughs> stop! She's a chicken and chips. <laughs> you mistake. Let, he, he, he took him outside. He said, "Look up to the skies, because the God that you have decided to serve, He does exceedingly and abundantly Amen. above all that you can ask or comprehend." What is it that you desire? Bring it. Come, let me show you some stuff. Come, let me open up your eyes. Come, let me show you what I can do. Look at the stars. As far as your eyes can see. Look at the stars. Ain't nobody going to be able to count your descendants. You're looking for one child, I'll give you a whole legacy. Because... He stayed rooted in his identity as a chosen one of God. God had been speaking to me. He told me to get out. I got out. What, who am I in my father's house? You may be a nobody in the sight of men, but you are somebody in the sight of God. What is it that you want? And so... As we were gathering, preparing for Jesus' night, and I want to come up and the choir get back up and over. As we were gathering for Jesus' night, I said, God, what did you want this gathering for? What is going to be the evidence that they came for Jesus? Because if I said to you, this is the season of God's children walking in unusual power. Amen. And as I took time out to pray and fast, I saw a scripture that I have never seen in my life. Le koriashandaya This is the God that you serve. Psalms chapter 22. And the Bible says in verse 31, He has done it. He has done it. I've never seen that scripture in my life. I've never seen that scripture in my life. And they will proclaim his righteousness declaring to a people yet unborn. Meaning that that's something that you have been waiting on God to do. God will do it in your life that your children's children. Have you heard of that testimony before? Where the testimony is so good that the grandchildren telling about what their grandparents do that they never met. 
means that the children's children's children will continue to hold on to the testimony because of how powerful it was. So you are thinking about something for, for, for God to do, don't give up on it. The word of the Lord to you today is, He has done it. He has done it. We're going to go into a time of prayer. And the Lord said this, you are going to open up your mouth like Abraham and you're going to raggle it before the Lord. What you want, the word over the atmosphere, the angels were sent to deliver to this room. He has done it. That you will go and testify. This is what the Lord has done. So I'm going to give you a moment to open up your mouth. This kerebash pura nadiya, deya nadiya nuno bo kaskare, baya nadiya nuno bo pura yala. For my house shall be a house of prayer. Kerebe de bush, kerebe de de bush, ara 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 shikaya. That thing that you have been desperate for God to do, you have prayed one year, two year, three years, four years, five years.
into the most to the little for the salvation of your family members. Christ your feet. Lele de bosco de bayana da mashanya da ba. Cosie de bani ando de bosco de yandera. Heaven is a courtroom. Heaven is a courtroom. And whenever the thief is caught, he must return sevenfold. Some of you is husbands that are not saved. Some of you is sons. Some of you is fathers. But you have been believing God for the salvation of your loved ones. And the enemy has refused to let them go. In this atmosphere of prayer, we are going to pray wherever the enemy has put their names and locked inside the pit of hell. You are going to as a warrior of heaven drive
but I want us out because of A, B, and C. Come, let us reason together. That is God saying, come, let us reason together. Fill me up. Father, in the name of Jesus. 